Hello, and thank you for joining me today for our webinar. Today, we will be going over improving your search engine ranking. The main topic of the discussion today is going to be about SEO, which stands for Search Engine Optimization. So from the world's biggest brands to modest personal websites, search engine optimization is an essential tool to drive traffic and acquire new customers and have your site found online. We will be going over how to build your Weebly website in a way where it becomes optimized. So it's something that you will do as you go rather than something that you'll do after you build your site and go back and do all the SEO. It's going to be much easier for you to do this as you are building your site. My name is Justin. I work for Weebly in our Scottsdale office. I'm on our training and communications team. I work a lot with the product development and our support agents, making sure everybody is on the same page. And I also I get to participate in internal trainings as well as these webinars like we're doing today. Feel free to ask questions at any point during the webinar. At the end of the webinar, I will be doing a Q&A session that will last for as long as there are questions for me to answer. I may end up answering your question as I move through the kind of set presentation that I have. But feel free to ask your questions at any time. You don't have to wait until the end. So what we're looking at is a, uh, a demo site that I've built in an account. And we're going to get started checking out how we can increase the search engine optimization of this site. So the first thing that we want to take a look at is here in the settings tab. And it's the site address. So a domain name defines the location of our website on the internet. So for example, right now my domain is myartofashtanga.weebly.com. So this is where people would be able to find my site. Choosing a domain for our website is a very important first SEO step. So keywords in the domain are no longer an SEO factor. So we just need to choose a domain that matches our business, our brand, or our personality. So generally, the best domains for SEO are short and memorable because a unique, easy to remember domain helps with link building and branding. So what about using the free subdomain versus a professional domain, something that we can purchase here or we can use one we already own? So the free subdomain is helpful when we're just getting started, but it will carry less SEO weight versus a custom domain. So we really can't be serious about our SEO until we have our own domain name. The free subdomain will always limit our SEO capabilities, and Google and other search engines recognize these as starter sites, and so the SEO metrics won't really build the way we want them to. With a custom domain, our content and links and SEO signals will all be collected and focused to, to this site and applied directly to our site's SEO growth. You just don't get that same thing with, with SEO, or excuse me, with the Weebly subdomain. So what about the different endings? So these are called TLDs, which stand for top level domains. So these are some of the options that you can get with Weebly. Um, there's many other endings to domain names. In and of themselves, they don't particularly matter when it comes to SEO. What really matters is what we choose for the main part of our domain name. For the purpose of the webinar, I'm going to use the .weebly.com, but again, the strong suggestion here is that you're using a professional domain name for your site. So we'll click continue, and now we have the site address set. The next thing we want to consider is URL optimization. So a URL is the location of a page on my website. So if I publish this site, and we go to the live site, and we'll just go to one of the pages. So this page is uh, Lunchtime Asana. And right here, this is the URL. So the full thing is the URL for my website. So after choosing the domain name part 
of the equation, uh, we need to make sure we're optimizing the URLs for our pages. This is important because keywords in the URL are a ranking factor. So keywords in this area do matter for my SEO optimization. Search engines use these URLs to kind of get a clue for what the page contains, much like our visitors will as they come to our site. So we want to think about using at least one keyword in the URL, but we want to stay away from what's known as keyword stuffing. So we don't want to have these be incredibly long, full of tons of words. We want them to be short and concise, but utilize keywords that we want on our site. Also, we want to kind of embrace the idea of a semantic URL. So we want this to immediately make sense to people that are coming to our website, people that are showing up at the page. Uh, we want it to describe the topic and the content of the page that it represents. So the more unique and memorable that we can make these URLs, the more likely people will remember them, share them, and link them um, across the internet. A, a string of you know random numbers or you know nonsensical keywords can actually hurt our SEO rather than help it. So how do we customize a URL like this, and how does this come to be in the first place? So if we go back to the editor, we go to the Pages tab, and we click on the page in the sidebar. So this is that page that we were on. By default, Weebly will turn the page name that we set into the URL for the page. It will omit special characters like this hashtag that I used right here, and so we just get lunchtime Asana. So the page name is what's going to show up by default in the URL as well as on our navigation. So I've chosen this with the hashtag as something to be you know, visibly appealing on my site. It's just the way that I wanted it to look. So I'm, I want to leave it like this, but what if I wanted to change the URL? So I want the page name to be this, but I want the URL to be different. So we can go to SEO settings and we see a number of different options here. We will go through all of these options uh, at some point during the webinar, but we're going to focus on this page permalink right here. So this is where I can actually choose what I want the URL to be. So this page is lunchtime Asana, and so we can call this, um, it's, it's kind of a gallery or a, a table of contents for galleries. So why don't we call this one Asana Galleries? HTML. I could even put a dash in here if we wanted to make it you know, really clear that there are two words. Anytime I make changes to my Weebly site, I just need to publish to make these changes live on the internet. We go back to the live website, go back to the same page that we were before, and we see the URL is now what we have set, while the page name remains the same. So we can do this with all of our pages. So we can do this with all of our standard pages. Standard pages are these one with the little note icon here. This is a blog page, the little comment box icon. For the blog page, I can do the exact same thing. Again, every page is going to be given the same URL um, built off of the page name, but I can set it uniquely here. Now, if I have blog posts, so let's say I create a blog post real quick. And we post it. So if we go to this blog post, we see that this URL is forward slash blog forward slash test. So if I want this part to be different where it says blog, then I'll change the URL of my blog page. If I want the second part of the URL where it says test, which again came from the name of my blog post, then I go in to edit the blog post, click on post options, advanced, and then I can change the permalink. So my first blog post. And then we'll click update. And now we see that 
this is the URL for this blog post. I can do the exact same thing for the products on my website if I have those. So here we have a product called Yoga Mats. If we go to the live site, find the product. So we can see that I've already set a random string here. Now obviously you would not want to do something like this, but where I set that was here in the advanced options. So I set the product permalink to this, but I could change it to um, yoga mats for colors. Save the product. And now if we go back to the yoga mat, we see that the URL has changed. So we will want to make sure that we have URLs that are that have keywords in them that are semantic in nature so we can understand them by reading them. And you don't necessarily have to go in and set all of these uniquely. If your page names, like this page is called Inspiration, I'm likely to leave the URL of that page to be Inspiration. So I won't go in and, and change it for, for this page. I would just leave it as it is. So those are things to think about as you get started building your site. The next thing that we want to think about when it comes to SEO is setting up our title tags. So the title tag is one of the single most important optimization elements for our site. So from a hierarchy perspective, the title tag leads the overall topic of our page in the eyes of search engines. So keyword placement in the title tag is not only an important ranking signal, it's also a key factor in click-through rates from search pages since the title tag is also the headline represented in the search results. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's go to Google and let's just search Ashtanga Yoga. What shows up here as the blue link is the title tag. So this is going to be the main indicator of what is on the page. So I'm going to be able to set the title tag in two different ways. The first way is by setting the title for my entire website. And the way I do that is by going to the settings tab, go to SEO, excuse me, stay on general, and then the site title. So whatever I name my site here is going to be the predominant aspect of what shows up in the search results. So this is the title for this page, Yoga Journal. This is the title for, for this website, ashtanga.com. That's the title that was set for this website. So we want to follow kind of a similar train of thought. Anytime we are uh, creating title tags or URLs, we want them to be short, memorable, using keywords, especially with the title tags, we want to think about creating an engaging short sentence that describes the content of the page or our website. So I'm going to leave this as my art of Ashtanga as the title tag for my site. And then when I go to the pages tab, we'll go to the, the welcome page here, SEO settings. And here where we see page title, we can set the title tag for the page. Now, by default, this title tag will be whatever the name of my page is. So if I were to go to my website right now, we see here in, in this tab, we see my art of Ashtanga dash welcome. So this is the title of my site. So the title tag I set in the settings tab and then a dash, and then the title of my page. So even without actually setting a page title yet, we believe by default we'll put in whatever you've named your page as the page title. So we want this to be more descriptive. So um, Ashtanga Galleries, Saunas, and the practice. So using a couple keywords in here to be the page title, we'll publish the changes to make them live. Go back to the live website. 
And now if I hover over, I see the title of my site dash the page title that I created, Ashtanga Galleries of Asanas and the Practice. So now if this page was in Google, it would show up with the page title and then the site title. So it would be a lot better than just having welcome be here. So I'm using something descriptive and using keywords. So that's how we can set it for our standard pages. We can do the exact same type of thing for our blog pages through SEO settings, set the page title. We can do the same thing for our blog posts. So go in to edit the post, click on post options, advanced, and then the SEO post title. And for any of you who are using Weebly for commerce, you can go into store, products, we'll go back to yoga mats, advanced options, and then we can set the SEO page title. So for here, um, we'll call this one um, black, pink, well, we'll call this one four color yoga mats, dash, dash, black on sale. And this is something that you can update regularly. So you can change it when you do something like that. So then we'll save the product. We'll go back to the site, find the product. And now we see in the title, we see the, the page name is the four color yoga mats. The black is on sale. And again, that's what would show up in, in the search results for this product. We can also set this for our categories. So we go to one of our categories, go to advanced options. We can set the SEO page title. We can also set the permalink for our categories. So again, for this category, it's called workshops. If I wanted my URL to be different than just workshops, I would change the permalink. If I wanted the page title to be different than just workshops, I would change the SEO page title. Save my changes, and then I would move forward. The next thing we're going to look at are the meta description best practices. So the meta description, if we go back into the category and advanced, the SEO description, that's what we're talking about with meta description. So it's a short piece of text that summarizes the content of our page. So it is displayed on the search engine results page as well. So we go back to Google. This here, the gray text, is the meta description for this page. So when you go, just think about yourself, when you go and you Google things, a lot of times what we're looking for is, does this match what we're asking? Does this, do we think this is going to answer our question? And then we look here for additional information. And a lot of times it's you know, very clear to us, like, yep, this page has what I'm looking for, or no, this, this is not the answer to my question. So then we move on and look at the next result. Right, So we want to make sure that the information we are putting into these fields is going to be the, um, the best information um, possible to describe the value that our page has. Okay? Notice that at a certain point, these can get too long. So Google shows about 150 to 160 characters in this area. So that's really what we want to keep our description down to because anything longer than that is not going to be seen and therefore it's really not going to be valuable. So this is one of the most effective ways and most valuable SEO elements to actually drive traffic from the search page to our page. So we want to write a description that is compelling, that's interesting. We want to always include some relevant keywords and important terms like brand names, if that makes sense, and a call to action. Um, you know, we want to create some sort of emotional response in this stranger who's about to click on our website because we want them to, to feel interested. We want them to be excited about clicking on this link and checking out our page. So how do we customize these meta descriptions in Weebly? So for the categories and products, it'll be again in the advanced options section. So we're going to choose a description to describe our workshops. So weekly workshops, whoops, to empower 
your practice. Or something like that. I'm using some keywords throughout here. How about we would let's do weekly Ashtanga, right? So using more keywords. Again, this is not going to be just a bunch of random words that don't make sense. This very much is something that's going to be read by humans, and even Google these days is smart enough to really read through descriptions to make sure that they make sense semantically. And if they don't, then you're not going to gain um, any optimization that you otherwise would by doing something like this. So we made a change to the category. We need to save it. I can go back into the products. We'll go back to the yoga mat, advanced, SEO description. So we'll say, Wow, uh, black mats on sale now. Four colors with a custom name embossing available. Um, how about expand your practice with a fail proof mat? Again, you'll always want to make sure that you are keeping this to the the correct amount of characters. You do not want it to, to, to go over. We don't have a character counter in here, but you can really easily um, you know, find one on Google um, to tell you how many characters you're using. So how about this? So we can use a website like this. We paste in what we have, and so this is 117 characters, so I could put even more into this if I wanted. So you'll want to, to pay attention to the length. So we made a change, we will save it. I will back out, we're on the blog, so we'll go into the blog post, again, post options, again, advanced, and we will put our description here. We can do the same for the blog page itself. So SEO settings, and then the page description, that will go here. And we can do this for all of the rest of our pages, and we absolutely should. Now, if we choose not to, so let's say I don't do it for the welcome page, what, what's going to show in Google? Well, basically, Google will scrape my site looking for text and will pull the first 150 to 160 characters that it finds on the page. So if I do not set my page description, Google will display whatever I've got going at the top of my, my page. The next thing that we want to talk about is a kind of basic internal link strategy. Maybe I'll, I'll take a step back and while we're looking at this page uh, pages tab, we have this box for meta keywords, right? And keywords are a, a major factor as we are building our site, as we are creating our content, as we're choosing our URLs and our descriptions and our titles, permalinks, keywords are very important in, in all of those aspects. So what about this box on the side here? You can go in and set keywords for each pages, but ultimately Google really doesn't give much weight to this at all anymore. In the past, it really mattered quite a bit, but as Google has gotten much better, it's paying much more attention to, number one, the content that you have on the page, right? Because when I do a Google search, Google's goal is to provide me with the best possible answer to my question, no matter what. It wants to give me the best answer. And so in the past, it used things like defined keywords to help it understand what the website and page was about. But at this point in time, Google is much better at looking at the page itself, figuring out what it's about, determining the keywords based on our content, our title, our description, the permalink, and determining keywords from that. And it doesn't necessarily use meta keywords that we would set in the page. So that's why I'm not really going to go over this. We can, we can add these. It's not going to hurt anything to add these. So I could add yoga, uh, Ashtanga, 
Notice I did a comma in between with no space. You will want to do this because there's a maximum number of characters. So if you add a space, it wastes a character. Um, so we can add keywords that define the page. But in our opinion here at Weebly, we would suggest that you actually focus your time in other areas rather than putting in keywords simply because it just doesn't matter to Google that much anymore. Okay, so we're going to move on from keywords and we're going to talk about internal link strategy. So links are actually an incredibly important part of SEO. So external links come from other websites and point to our site. So they'll send traffic to our site. And internal links are the links that we place on our page that link to the other pages of our site. So things like the navigation menu. So I don't have it on my home page, but I've got a menu here. So these links are, are very important to Google and and our SEO, as well as any other links that we have in the body of our page. So this is a gallery and all of these images are linked. I'll show you here. We'll go to Lunchtime Asana. So if I click on any of these images, it links me to a different page. So internal links, they, they not only help users navigate to relevant pages and content, but they also help search engines crawl our content. So when the search engine goes to our site to try to figure out what it's all about, it's going to show up here at our homepage, and then it's going to try to move to the next page of the site. The only link I have on this page is this enter button. So from the homepage, I can only go to one other page. And so the way Google is going to see that is they're going to believe that as the website owner, I think that whatever is behind this button is the most important page of my site because it is the only avenue that I'm giving people to enter my site from, from the home page. And for this website, that's not necessarily true, right? I have a store page. I would much rather, if I have a store page, I'm obviously trying to make some money off of this site. So this page is kind of more important in the long run than a gallery page. So the way that I designed this, where it only goes to a gallery page from the home page, isn't the best way for it to be built for the purposes of SEO. So we're telling search engines what we think is important by what we link from each page. Another way to think about internal links and page rank, um, every page on our site is connected like a tree's root system. And each link passes SEO life to the pages that it connects to. So the home page has the most of this SEO life to pass on. And from there, we can use internal links to spread um, the, the rank and the value across the other pages of our site. And ideally, direct the SEO to the most valuable pages. Again, do we really want Google to think that this gallery is the most valuable page? Or do we want Google to think that our store is the most valuable page? So when we think about how we're going to build our links, we always want to start with the navigation menu. Again, I've hidden that from my home page, so I'm really not doing myself any, any favors with that. But on these pages, those, these links are here. Now there are only four, which really is, is not a lot, and there, there should be quite a bit more. So doing things like sub pages. So here in our pages tab, I have sub pages under lunchtime Asana, but they're all hidden. So for SEO purposes, it would actually be better to unhide all of these pages and then we'll publish our site. We'll go back to here and just refresh. And now we see the drop down. So we are increasing the number of pages that you can reach from any single page. And, and this is a really positive thing when it comes to the optimization of our site. So we want to think about breaking out our most important pages into these main navigation options and then have related pages underneath them. So again, we're not only building this to make it easy for our users to navigate our site, but we're doing this to make it easy for Google to understand what our site is about and what we think is important. 
What about the internal content links? So that's these like linking from galleries. These are very important too. You know, it's a bit more strategic than creating the navigation links. So we want to look at pages and content that we think is valuable. So like a product page or maybe our blog, if that's the most valuable. And we want to link to these pages with a text link in our content. So we can mix it up with images and buttons um, and we and with with the text itself. So back on my home page, you know, I would really want to go ahead and add something. Uh, we'll go to build. Go back to the home page, build, and then maybe here we'll add some text. It says enter store, and then maybe some other text where we say um, black mats 10% off, and then maybe add some other text. Oops, you get the idea. So then we can go ahead and we can link this one to our product. So we'll link it to the mat, yoga mats. And then we will link this one to our storefront. So now we've created these two new links on the home page, uh, which is going to be very valuable. We are telling customers and we're telling Google and other search engines what we find valuable uh, just by creating links to those things on our pages. Now our, our home page is one of the best places uh, on the internet, um, or excuse me, the best places on our site to put internal links. So it's usually the most powerful page on our site when it comes to SEO and it carries the most what's called link equity. So it passes the most SEO um, value onto the other pages. So creating these links on our home page to a product page like we did here is a really powerful way to send page rank to this other page and help it start to rank better so that eventually this page shows up in Google. It's also really useful for our visitors because we are helping direct them to the product page that they may be interested in instead of just hoping that they find it by navigating around our site. So we've talked a little bit about the importance of content, but it really is the most important part of our, of our site. There's nothing more important. We can build a bunch of links and we can set our titles and descriptions and URLs. But again, search engines are trying to provide the best answer. They want to find the most valuable resource for any, uh, any question. Uh, so creating great content is an assessment is essential to SEO. Um, but we really want to get unique content on our page. And it's important to remember, like most of the strategies that we're working on so far are designed to help the content of our site rank higher. You know, but content is the key foundational element to the entire SEO of our website. So when we look at a page, let's look at uh, the inspiration page. So when we break down the content of this page, we have headlines here. This is a headline. And then we have text. So in the editor, if we go to the inspiration page. This here is the title element. So that's considered a headline. And then down here is the text element, which is considered the body content. So when we use headlines on our page, there's an HTML markup to tell the browser that it is a headline. And search engines also look at headlines as a factor for context of the page. It, so it's still valuable to use keywords in the content of our headlines. Again, we want to keep it very semantic um, and natural. We don't want to just throw a bunch of keywords in here. So in, in the HTML, the headlines are noted by what are called H tags. And all we have to do and all we have to know in Weebly for adding these is we just need to add the title element onto the page. It automatically adds the H tag and it allows you to have these headline kind of context denotations on your site. 
The next thing is the body content. So these are the main text blocks on our page. And it's the most important piece of our SEO because even if we check off every other um, SEO task, it's the body content that we've created. And if it's not unique and providing quality, then it will never rank. So at the most basic level, we want the pages on our site, we want to fill them with content that is unique, is going to be valuable, and is going to help someone searching for keywords that are represented in the content. Now, as far as the theme goes, all themes that Weebly provides have the same basic components needed for, uh, for great SEO. They are responsive, which means that they um, are perfect for mobile. You don't have to do anything special to make them look good on mobile. Uh, they load quickly and they don't contain uh, any blocking resources or crazy scripts that would actually cause you to lose rank. So uh, where a theme could impact SEO is your ability um, to use it to put lots of unique, high quality content on the page. So all themes give us control over layout and design so that we can build content focused pages. Um, we just wanna find the theme that kind of matches the, the visual um, that we have for our site. So in summary, your theme choice won't negatively impact your SEO. All of the themes that Weebly offers here in themes and change theme uh, will be just fine for, for your SEO needs. So what else do we have on these pages? We've got the text, we've got the headlines, we've got our page title, we have our navigation links. We should have links in here that go to other pages. We haven't talked about images yet. So images offer unique SEO opportunities to help our page send additional uh, signals to search engines. So search engines will crawl the data related to images just like they will crawl the content, the text of our page. And not only work to understand and display them in an image search, so if we go to Google and then go to images, so this is the Google image search. So it also uses them as another source of guidance for the topical relevance of our page. So how do we increase the optimization of an image? I'm going to jump to the home page because I have more images and we'll kind of prove the point here. So we've got these images. If I click on the image and scroll down in the modal and click on advanced, we see there's a border, border color, and then this thing called alt text. So the image alt tag gives search engines and other bots a context for this image. The, the tag helps search engines understand the meaning of the image uh, and is also used by screen readers. So it serves both SEO and accessibility functions. So what do I mean? So this one, by default, the alt text is picture. So this is Ashtanga Yoga Headstand, okay? And then we'll jump into this one and we will set Ashtanga Yoga Handstand. Maybe we'll do this one here and we'll call it Ashtanga Yoga Arm Balance. So we're using some keywords. Uh, best practices for the alt tag is we want to keep it short. Uh, we want to keep it under 125 characters for sure. So we're not writing a whole paragraph here, but we certainly can do a little bit more than just a few sentences. We don't want to stuff this with just keywords. We want to keep it natural and descriptive, kind of the same uh, way that we're doing everything else on our site when it comes to SEO. Now, if the image doesn't load on somebody's page for some reason, like let's say they have a really bad internet connection, they try to load my page, uh, but the images don't load. This, this line of text that we put here, the alt text, is actually what would appear for them if the image doesn't load. So we want to use something that really describes the image. So we need to publish these changes. We'll go to our live site. So we're on the home page, and as we're here, we don't notice any changes right away, right? There's nothing that we can see that tells us that we've added alt tags to these three images. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into the code, but if we look at the source code for our site, I'm going to show you a few things. So here we have the title for the page. 
This is the title for the whole site. This is the title for the page. Here's the description that I set. And if we go down, we're going to find all of these image links. And these are the links to the images on my page. And we can see here inside of this code for the image, we see alt equals picture. So this is the default for all of the images that we upload to Weebly. So if none of the images loaded or if somebody was using a screen reader, they were visually impaired and they went to this page, it would just say picture, 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 picture. When it got down to these, it would say Ashtanga Yoga arm balance. And this one would say Ashtanga Yoga headstand. And this one would say Ashtanga Yoga handstand. So just to give you an idea of where it actually shows up on your live site, it's in the code, um, but it's used in a variety of ways by both search engines and other pieces of software that could be looking at, at your site, maybe on behalf of uh, a, a viewer. So what about something like image captions? So for our image elements, we can set the alt tags and we could also set to captions. But on this page, we have a gallery element. And the gallery element, if we go to advanced, we see that we can't actually add alt tags to these images. So what we need to do is utilize captions in order to give the same type of context. So captions provide SEO value. Um, not only do they give us more on-page context for what these images are about, but they provide additional information for visitors looking at the image. So Google looks at text near an image um, to help it understand the context of the image. That's in addition to the alt tag. Image captions aren't a requirement of SEO like the alt tag, but it's generally a good idea um, if a caption works for the image and the page. So for you, you know, building your page visually, if a caption works, it's a good thing to have on there. And for a gallery, it's almost a necessary thing to use um, simply because you can't have alt tags on these gallery images. One thing that I want to note is this page, especially on this site, is a really terrible page when it comes to SEO ranking. All we have is one little piece of text, three captions, and three images. Overall, this page provides almost no value, and that will be reflected in the way it ranks on search engines. This is something that is never going to rank very high because it just doesn't provide value. So if I really wanted this page to be meaningful on my site more than just the table of contents, I would add text elements down here, a title element, and I would create more content for this page. Now we don't have to create a mile long page every time we build a page, but we always want to make sure that we are creating value on that page because it will help not only that page rank, but our site as a whole. Uh, the next concept for images is the URL of the image itself and the file name. So if I go to my site, if I right click on the image and I just open the image in a new tab, we can see this is the full URL of the image. Now this part of the URL is going to be by default, you won't be able to do anything to change it, but this part you can actually adjust on your own. So I'll do something really quick. I'm going to take a quick screenshot of this image and we will go back into the editor. We'll go back to the home page. And then I'm going to rename the image on my computer. I'm going to call it, oops, go back here. I'm going to call this image Ashtanga Yoga Headstand. So now in the editor, I'm just going to go in. I'm going to replace the image with this new one that I just took a screenshot of and renamed. So for my purposes here, it looks the same because it's the same image. But when I publish it, go back to the live site open a new tab. So we can see that the URL has changed to match 
the name or the file name that I gave the image. And this is very valuable because again, uh, search engines do pay a lot of attention to the keywords that are in our URLs. So having the image have its own URL is acting kind of like an alt tag. It gives context to this image that Google can then use to have this image show up in a search for you know those keywords um, and the like. So it's a very valuable thing that we can do. One thing about images, just in general, um, images are pretty large files. When, when text loads on the screen, it doesn't take very long. But images can be pretty big. And even though most people's internet is really, really fast these days, it still takes time to download things. And one of the ranking factors for websites is the, how quickly a site can actually get ranked. Excuse me, how, get loaded. So as the more images that we have on the page, the more we want to make sure that the images aren't all really big files. And the best way to do that is always upload images that are the same size that we want the image to be on our website. Because I can always go and I can drag this image out and then clearly this image is a lot bigger than it was when it was in this section. It was just being resized. But if I, I resize this image down to this, on the main website, when somebody loads this page, the large image is still being downloaded to their computer, and then it just becomes kind of morphed to show the smaller image. But if I uploaded the smaller image to begin with, it would just be a smaller size file and my page would load more quickly, which does have an impact on how my page is ranked. So just something to think about when it comes with images. A lot of times, you know, especially if you're a photographer, you know, that's going to be a balance that you're going to have to take. You know, putting these monster HD files on your website. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of best practices with that is to actually link to those um, so they don't actually like you don't have the huge HD image on a page. You use kind of a smaller, like lesser version. And then you, you link maybe to a different page which has the large version. Or you let people download the file to see the larger version. It just helps with your page load times and then in general with your SEO. So we've talked a lot about all these things that we can do, we can make all of these changes so that Google can see, you know, and show our site. But how does it work? So if if I were this site and I changed my description, does the description change on Google right away? And the answer is no. Google has to go back and recrawl every site on the internet to get an update about what that site is about and what this data says. So when I publish my site, all the changes that I make show up immediately in my source code, but it doesn't show up immediately in Google. And if we were to do nothing, then it would take anywhere from two to four weeks for Google to come back and recrawl our site. It will always come back and see it again, but it's not going to do it very often. But we can do something to make this happen much more quickly. So if we go into the settings tab, go to SEO, and we scroll down and we see this area called header code. Underneath we see Google Webmaster Tools link and we'll go ahead and click it. We will sign in. Give me a moment. So I'm signed in now to this, uh, oops, where did it go? Sorry, give me one more second. Oh. 
All right. So here we are. After we sign in, we see this Welcome to Search Console. So this is the uh, Google Search Console. This is where we can basically create a relationship between our website and Google so that Google can more quickly know when we make changes and can know that it has to go back and re-update its records about our site. So we see this toggle here for website. And for some reason, I can't click in it. Okay, so there's a toggle here, and you can do this for apps if you're developing apps, but obviously that's not what we're doing. We're just using a website, and then we can go through and put our URL. So to get our URL, we'll go to our general settings, and we'll just copy our site address, or we can get it from the live site, and then we'll paste it in. One thing to note here, notice that there's no www dot in front of these dot .com domains. Now, if I was using a real domain name, such as myartofashtanga.com, I would want to create this using the www dot in the domain name. Because if I only create it like this without the www dot, then Google will recognize that, hey, this version exists, you should set up this version with Google as well. But if you set it up with the www, then Google won't ask you to do it a second time. So it just makes things a little bit quicker. In our case, we don't need to worry about it. We're using the .weebly.com. There is no www dot, and we can just move forward by clicking add a property. So at this point, Google is asking us to verify that we own this website that we're trying to create this relationship for. And it gives us this recommended method. This method will not work with Weebly. Um, so we need to click on alternate methods. And then we are going to use the first option here for HTML tag. All we need to do, there's some quick instructions, but we need to copy this code and then it tells us that it needs to go into the site's home page. It should go in the head section before the first body section. So what does that mean? Well, we have created a location here in the SEO. So I'm in settings, SEO. <clears throat> Scroll down, we see footer code and header code. So footer code, whatever code I put in here will show up at the bottom of my page. Um, in the source that I went into earlier. And whatever we put in the header code will go precisely where Google wants us to put this, in the head section before the first body section. So we have our code here, we save, we publish, and now we can move forward. All we need to do is click on verify below. So now Google is going to our site checking that that code is there. It is there, so it knows that we were able to make a change for the website, and therefore, we own the website. And so here we are at the dashboard, and there's nothing on it yet, right? Because Google hasn't yet crawled this site. It's too new, um, and it doesn't know anything about it. But we can kind of speed that process up by using what are called sitemaps. So here in the right-hand column, we can click on these arrows next to no sitemaps, and then we want to go ahead and add a sitemap. What is a sitemap and how do you get one, right? If we go to our website, to our homepage, forward slash sitemap.xml, this will be the same for every single Weebly website. And when we go to this URL, we see a list of all of our pages and the last time that these pages were published. One thing to note is that if you have chosen to hide your entire website from the search engines, or if you've chosen to hide 
your individual pages from the search engines, they will not show up here in your sitemap. So this is what our sitemap looks like. It's nothing that we would ever share with our users. It's 100% a way to <clears throat> help sites like Google take a, a really quick look at our website. So all we have to do is copy this part of the URL, sitemap.xml. We go back in here, paste it in, and then we click on submit. So the item was submitted, we refresh the page, and now immediately Google knows that there have been 17 pages submitted. So it's aware of what our site looks like now. And it's pending being looked at by the Google bots, the things that crawl the website. And that's it. So right now we have just created a relationship with Google where it has a very in-depth view into our site and how it is right now. And the neat thing about this is once Google crawls the site, it recognizes this number here. So we have the date and the time, the last time that the site was published. So in its database, it will know what this number is for this page. So when I go back into Weebly and I publish my website again, and I go back to the sitemap, notice this is 5456 right here. So if I refresh the page, now we see it's 5747. So this page has changed completely. All of these entries have changed. So Google will recognize that, hey, our database no longer matches what shows up here on the sitemap. We better go take another look at the website. Something has changed. So then it goes and looks at your site more quickly. So rather than waiting two to three weeks for your changes to show up on Google, these changes will show up in two to three days or less. So that is setting up Google Search Console. You can do this with Yahoo and Bing um, and a number of other search consoles. Google is the most important one to do it for, so that's the only one we're going to go over in the webinar. But the process for the others is the same, very similar, and there's help documentation uh, available for that. A couple other topics that I want to cover before we get to the Q&A really quickly. In settings, SEO, if we scroll down all the way, we see this thing called 301 redirects. This is a very, very important um, topic, especially if you are rebuilding your website from like a previous version of your website that exists somewhere else. So in Weebly, let's go, let's find our site. So in Weebly, the way that the, the URLs work is every page has its own URL. So just because these three pages are sub pages of Lunchtime Asana, they don't show up like, um, like this. So on some websites, you would see Asana Galleries and then lunchtimeasana.html. But this page doesn't exist because Weebly doesn't organize the URL structure in that way. So if I had a website that I built somewhere else where this page existed and this page ranked on Google and I knew people went to this page, I don't want to lose this because if Google goes back and is like, hey, let's check out this page and then it reaches a 404, that's going to kill the search ranking and the value of, of that page. So what can we do? We can use 301 redirects. So we click on add a redirect and we just paste in the last part of the URL. So the old URL is this, asana-galleries forward slash lunchtime asana.html. And then I can choose which page on my website I want that to go to. So let's say I want that to go to the lunchtime asana page. So I save the redirect, save all the changes. I'm gonna copy this. Save it, save it, and publish to make our changes live. So now if I go back to the 404 page, I change the URL. So this page would 404 before, but now 
we see that it automatically routes us to the lunchtime Asana page. And I could do the same thing for black and white, professional selfies, for any page, even if it was some you know, totally random string, you know, if it was forward slash and then a bunch of letters and numbers and another forward slash and then a dash and whatever, I can set it up so that all of these work. All I have to do is create the 301 redirect. I can create multiple, publish the site. And now this craziness that I just typed in there, if I go to it, it's going to route me to a particular page. So a very valuable um, thing to do for your site. The last thing that I want to mention, if we go to, let's go to Google. Um, so we're searching Ashtanga Yoga. Mm, I don't really want the map. Oh, wait, that was perfect. Okay, <clears throat> so when I... The Google realizes my location right now, right? So when I search Ashtanga Yoga, it recognizes that I'm in, you know, the Scottsdale area of Arizona. And so it's pulling up studios that match this result, right? Based on the ranking that these websites have. But this here, this is something that you, you doesn't just come automatically. Okay, so you can build something like this, and it's very valuable just because so many people use Google, and this type of information is pulled from people's, on people's phones, you know, or on the internet, Google Maps, so really, really valuable. Um, so if we went to google.com forward slash business, we could create that type of layout right here. And then we would, you know, build the address and the hours. And then any time that we wanted to change something, like our hours changed, we could go in and change it here as well. And I can do this for Google, for Yelp, for Facebook, for dozens of different major websites online. But that's very time consuming because every time my hours change, I have to go to Google and Yelp and Facebook and update all of them. But Weebly has an app that we've partnered with. So in our app store, when we go to um, Site Booster, Site Booster does the exact same thing that you can do here, except for you only put the information in once, and any time that you need to edit it, it automatically pushes the edits out to all of these different groups, all of these different big websites. So it's a huge time saver and the price point for the value that you're getting is super low. So it's, you know, yes, it costs money. And so you wouldn't do it right away. Everything else that I've talked about in this webinar is um, you want to do first, but especially for, you know, a business, this is a major, major positive thing that you can do for your website to help really leverage your time um, and make sure that you have a really good SEO. The last thing before we get into the uh, Q&A is there is a website, weebly.com forward slash SEO, and this is the ultimate guide to SEO. Everything that I've gone over today was from getting started and I went in order because we fleshed this out. This was a, a very well-built document and it has a lot more than what I can get to in the time to do this webinar. How to do keyword research, how to think about growth. This is an amazing document and would be the first place that I would go to get started um, if I had any questions about what I went over in this webinar or just wanted to make sure that I as a business owner had a full understanding of what I'm trying to do here. So I'm going to get a quick drink of water, take a look at some of the questions and be back in less than a minute and we'll start the Q&A. Okay, so the first question is from Fraser. Um, and his question is, so you make changes and then you publish and then you make more changes and then you publish. Uh, to keep these changes, you do not unpublish um, the published site and then, and then republish. So the question is, in order to get my changes to show, do I actually have to unpublish what was previously published? 
the answer is no. So I can just publish on once on one on, you know, over and over and over, and it will just continually update my live site. If I click the unpublish button and unpublish my website, if I were to go to any page on the site now, I would see that it's down, right? There's a 404 page. And then all I have to do to get it back up is click on publish again, and now we see the website again. The next question is, you, so you're not really published to the internet until you uh, include a, a domain name, right? So kind of two ways to answer that question. So uh, again, we have a couple of options when it comes to our domain names. We can use a .weebly.com or we can use a professional domain name like myartofashtanga.com. Ultimately, for a serious website, you want to have your own domain name, especially when it comes to SEO. But when you're getting started and you're just kind of testing out Weebly and you're, you're getting, uh, you're, you're starting to build your site, you can publish to a Weebly subdomain and then at a later time, connect your site to a real domain name. When, when you're ready for your site to really start gaining search ranking, you want to make sure that you're using a, a professional custom domain name rather than the .weebly.com, just because search engines recognize .weebly.com addresses as kind of starter sites, so they don't get you know, credit for being as valuable as something with a real domain name. And then there was a follow-up to that. So in other words, even when publishing while working on the web page, the publish just saves the changes, but not a live site unless I transfer my domain name to Weebly. So if I had an existing website that was myartofashtanga.com and I was rebuilding that website on Weebly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to start publishing my Weebly site to this until it was done. But I would want to you know, see my website, my Weebly site online, make sure that it was working the way I wanted, and that's why I would use the, the .weebly.com. Fraser asks another, I, I have an old website and a domain name. Do I need to use the redirect um, if I transfer my domain name to my new Weebly site? And so the answer is yes, if you have pages at your old domain name um, that you can't create on Weebly. So again, the example um, was, um, and, and it could be anything. So under lunchtime Asana, there's selfies. Now at a lot of, excuse me, at a lot of different web hosts, the way that this navigation structure works is it actually changes the structure of the URLs. So this one, if I go to Lunchtime Asana, it's Asana-Galleries. And so any of, oops, any of these sub pages actually become sub URLs to Asana-Galleries. So let's say my selfies page used to show up at asana-galleries forward slash selfies dot html, but I can't make that happen on Weebly. I can't create a page that looks like this. All I can do is have the page that's actually the, the selfies page um, here. So this is the only the URL that I can have. So if that's the case and you have pages like that, you want to go to settings, SEO, add a redirect, Throw in the old URL. We want this to go to the selfies page. Save, save, and publish. And then when we try to go to this page, it directs us to the correct page. So as you're building your site, you may find like, oh, okay, so this URL that I used to have, uh, I can't, I can't build on on Weebly. Um, so I need to use a 301 redirect. Um, and so you'll want to you'll want to do that. Um, if you have any more questions about 301 redirects, you can find let's do this weebly.com forward slash SEO. Here under getting started, 
we can go to redirects and there's a video which goes through um, some more of it and you can get more information here from our help center. Our help center has all sorts of information under the SEO topic where you can get additional help in addition to the um, SEO guide. I would start with the guide, but if you have questions, you can come here and you can go to our community. So at the community, we can scroll down and on the left, we see SEO. And here's where you can see um, people discussing their best practices, what is working for them, uh, what apps they're using to help with their SEO and, and all sorts of stuff. And you can ask your own questions. Um, so this is a couple Weebly community moderators, but it's mostly users just like you who are building sites and want to help each other out. So that brings us to the, the end of the webinar today. There are, there are no further questions at this time. Again, there's a, a huge number of resources that are available to you. I would always start with the weebly.com um, forward slash SEO, this page here. Uh, when you're getting started with SEO. But if you do have any questions that you just can't figure out from there, you can always uh, send us an email, you can give us a call, or you can write in and, and chat with us. So thank you very much for joining me today. Again, my name is Justin. Um, I feel very grateful to be able to deliver these to you. I hope it was valuable to you. And I look forward to uh, seeing you in the webinars that we have about building a store and using Promote if you uh, have any interest in learning about those topics. Thanks again. Have a great day, uh, and we'll, we'll see you soon. Bye.